Today's video is brought to you by Candid. Hey, brother! Guys, it's happening. Everybody, calm down! But it's happening. Maybe. Earlier this week, the very thing that Harry Potter fans have wanted for literally years has possibly, maybe, been confirmed. Albeit in the most vague, non-specific, left you wondering possible way. But nonetheless, in the works, it appears is a Harry Potter television series for HBO Max. Who would star in it? Unclear. Who is writing it? Unclear! When will it be happening? Unclear! But am I excited? Very clear. Lee, obviously, you can tell by the tone of my voice. And oh my gosh, can I be involved in this? Like, genuine question, business email is in the description down there. If you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody, let us know! Anyway, everything else aside, the thing that for us here at SCB that has been the most fun to speculate on is just what could this television series possibly be about? So today we're going to run down our top candidates and suggestions for what we would love to see on screen. Before we dive on in, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Candid. If you are unhappy with your smile or have ever felt a little self-conscious about your smile, then Candid might be just the thing for you. Candid makes clear aligners that get your teeth straight fast. And it's a great option whether or not you've had traditional braces before. Take Sharon from Pittsburgh, for example. Sharon says, I wore braces as a teenager. Flash forward 30 years, I had crowding on the bottom and one of my teeth actually stuck out. That's when I made the decision to move forward with Candid and I finally got my confidence back. Yeah, you did, Sharon! Yeah, you did! And the good news is with Candid, the same orthodontist who creates your plan sticks with you through the entire process, so you always know how you're doing. And the average Candid treatment only takes six months and you'll start seeing results well before then. And, and it costs thousands of dollars less than traditional braces. Become your best you and start straightening your teeth today and get $75 off your starter kit when you go to candidco.com slash SEB and use promo code SEB at checkout. Again, that's gonna be $75 off when you go to candidco.com slash SEB and use code SEB. One more time, that's candidco.com slash SEB, code SEB, link is in the description down below. Okay, so there is no doubt that lately it has been an interesting time to be a Harry Potter fan, to say the least. I mean, for one thing, you have the Fantastic Beasts series, which is obviously currently in motion, but it's been pushed back a lot due to things like COVID. Although the word on the street is that filming is supposed to be picking back up again this year with the slated release date of summer of 2022. That will have made it four years since the release of Crimes of Grindelwald, which is quite a long time for such a major franchise when you consider like Marvel is putting out multiple movies a year. Also during all of that time, we have one of the key characters, Grindelwald, being recast from Johnny Depp to Mads Mikkelsen because Johnny Depp's got all sorts of crazy stuff happening in his world right now. Honestly though, if you count both of the Deathly Hallows as separate movies, this is the fourth movie in a row that Grindelwald is being recast and being played as someone else. So it almost seems like it's kind of got like the defense against the dark arts teacher kind of curse about it. So maybe it's just par for the course. Honestly, personally, I feel like Colin Farrell could have just done it the whole time. I thought he was awesome to begin with. They could have just made his hair like blonde instead and it would have been fine. My two cents. And then on top of that, of course, you've got everything swirling around JK Rowling herself right now and kind of her commentary on the transgender community, which are comments that seem to fly directly in the face of the very messaging of the Harry Potter books to begin with. Trans rights are human rights. In any case, the news that a TV show could be in the works was kind of a breath of fresh air. Even that though brings up the question, what even is the news? Because it was kind of confusing. Let's see if I can cover all of it. <sighs> Warner Brothers was taking meetings with writers this week about a possible new Harry Potter show. Actually, that was about it. That is really all that is confirmed. No ideas are settled upon. No writers are selected. No theme has even been chosen. Nothing is even in pre-production. At best, we could call this, they are thinking about pre-pre-pre-production, which I would agree with you completely. 
It doesn't sound like an awful lot to go on, but also at the same time, I would think that it would be ridiculous to assume something isn't coming. And that is because world building right now is big business and the streaming wars are in full effect. I mean, seriously, when was the last time you just picked up the TV remote and were like flipping through the channels? Never! Some of you might not even know what the phrase flipping through the channels even means. It's changing the channels, looking for something to watch. You don't get to choose what to watch and you're kind of just hoping that you land on something early enough so that you can gain enough context to just sit along and go from there. Also, there are commercials, which you can't skip. And they're not even specifically targeted for you. They are literally one of four things. Cars, insurance, beer, and Flex Seal. That's it. Do any of us even know if Flex Seal actually works? No. Is it kind of amazing they made a canoe out of it? Yes. Do I have cans of it on my shelf at home that I have no plans for? Absolutely. Anyway, the point is that Disney, Netflix, Hulu, Apple, and Prime are all crushing it, cranking out original content seemingly every single month. And then there is HBO. Or is it HBO Now? Go? Honestly, I have like both of these all three of these installed on my devices. I don't even know which one I'm supposed to be using. Definitely don't know the passwords to any of them. And I'm relatively certain some of them are obsolete. And I was willing to deal with this for a while because Game of Thrones, but that ship has sailed and sunk. Really? Bran? The whole idea, I don't know. I Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong. But John was the only person who didn't want the throne and everyone else wanted the throne. Doesn't it just make sense that the one person who didn't want it would end up on it? like? Anyway, it's called HBO Max now, and it seems to be the solution to all of the confusion. They do have some good stuff on there, there is no doubt about it, but the number one world that they have to step into the arena with the MCU and the ever-growing Star Wars universe is absolutely Harry Potter. Okay, sorry, in case that was confusing. Harry Potter is owned by Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers owns HBO, and HBO's streaming service is HBO Max. Harry Potter is easily the most popular franchise that they own, and fans have been asking for this forever. So yes, we're absolutely gonna see something eventually. But sadly, I think the hiccup that we're gonna be dealing with, at least for the most immediate future, is the contract that Warner Brothers has with NBC, which doesn't expire until mid-year of 2025. Said contract basically says that NBC is the only network that is allowed to stream Harry Potter content. The great news though, is that things like this take a lot of time to put together, which means there's plenty of time to make it. But what? will it be about? Let's start with the obvious. Doing what we do here on this channel, the number one thing that we have seen requested from fans everywhere is a series about the Marauders. This would be the story that follows James, Lupin, Sirius, and Peter through their years at Hogwarts. And all of the shenanigans that they get into. Quidditch could be much more fleshed out. There would be all sorts of rule breaking, map making, and animagus being. It certainly sounds like there is a lot of room to have have fun with those particular storylines. And there's a lot that we could add to the backstories of other characters we know and love, like Lily and Snape and Hagrid or possibly Petunia. Oh man, Neville's parents can make an appearance. That would be so cool. Like screw the Marauders, let's do the Longbottom. Additionally, when we get a glimpse into what it was like during the events leading up to the first Wizarding War, or at the very least, you could still have Voldemort as the key villain up to all sorts of nefarious things in recruiting Death Eaters from Hogwarts itself. And believe it or not, there actually is a legendary piece of writing that exists out there in the real world that depicts a little bit of what this story would be like. It was written by JK Rowling on the back of a postcard. It's about 800 words long and entails a story about James and Sirius getting in trouble with the local police. I believe the motorcycle was involved. That being said, JK Rowling specifically wrote on that specific postcard that that story was not part of a planned prequel of any kind, although that was back in 2008. What makes that postcard even more legendary though, is that it was actually stolen from the person who won it at auction and it has not yet been recovered to this day. In any case, while I am of course down for a Marauder series, there are some issues attached to it in terms of the fact that there's no real villains that we could be introduced to. Like we know that Snape turns them over, Peter squeals on them and Voldemort kills them. And that's wherein lies the problem. Like, yes, we could absolutely get to know these characters so much better, but we also know exactly where it's going. That being said, that exact thing was also true of the characters in Rogue One. 
You knew they weren't gonna make it through the end of the movie, but it's still a fun movie. Either way, plenty of other directions they could take this show. Next up would be, instead of going back in time, they could just go forward into the future. The year is 2300, and the only thing that stands a chance against artificial intelligence is magic. No, I'm kidding. But the really cool thing about the three actors who played the Golden Trio in the original Harry Potter series is that they're, of course, growing up, which means we could have like an adult version of Harry Potter. Adult version sounds wrong. What I mean is like, Harry Potter, but them as adults. This would be tuning in to the story of Harry, Ron, and Hermione after they leave Hogwarts. Like, what are they up to now? Now, the obvious issue here is that this already exists and kind of tells that story. And I don't think that anyone would really take issue with them just saying once and for all that the cursed child is not canon, but for now it is still there. Actually, I know that we like dog on the Cursed Child all the time, but I have to say that like the play itself is absolutely incredible and worth going to see in post COVID times. So just disclaimer. The other issue here is of course that Voldemort is dead. And because he was supposed to be like the biggest and baddest villain there ever was, to have someone who's even more extreme than him would kind of like, undermine the seriousness of the book series. And while that's also true, anything less than Voldemort would just kind of be like, yeah, well, of course Harry can beat him. It's less than Voldemort and Harry beat Voldemort. But that may be where there's just an opportunity to try something different altogether, tell a different kind of story, similar to what the MCU is currently doing with like WandaVision, for example. It's a show about superheroes, but it's been kind of morphed into like this sitcom formula. So similarly, maybe like Harry Potter, the detective series could be super fun, kind of like a Sherlock-esque type of show. And I do think that could be a lot of fun to tune into because Harry, Ron, and Hermione, as we've ever seen them fighting evil, has always been as like teenage students. And it would be amazing to see them as like fully realized wizards out there fighting crime. Moving on though, the other possible option out there would be to adapt another kind of textbook style story like they did with Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Quidditch through the ages, anybody? Like, forget the idea of fighting dark forces. Just imagine a sports drama in the wizarding world. Like, they don't have to tell a story that ties in the rest of the universe at all. Our heroes don't have to be saving the world from imminent destruction. Like, imagine just following the story of a ragtag Quidditch team, like, making it through each season, like, rising in the ranks. Yeah. Instead of evil, they struggle with things like team chemistry and adversity. And maybe it takes place a long time ago and you get to see the sport of Quidditch evolve. Like, did you know that the snitch used to be an actual bird called a golden snidget? See, we're learning already. What fun. And either way, the Quidditch scenes in the books especially were always some of my favorites. So I could totally be in for more of that. Side note, if you need like a truly great sports, nay, humanity show, I highly recommend you check out Ted Lasso. It is just a pure your delight. Seriously, do it. It will like make you a happier person. How many shows do that? Along those lines though, they could also do something similar to the Tales of Beetle the Bard, where you're just following Beetle along on all of his adventures and kind of finding the true origin stories that ultimately become the kind of children's tales they know later. But of course the real mission is that he's actually collecting all of the stories because he himself is on the hunt for the Deathly Hallows. Dun, dun, dun! Hands down though, and chances are you know this is exactly where I've been going with this entire video. The number one thing that I would absolutely love to see is a founder series. Godric, Salazar, Rowena, and Helga. To me, this is absolutely the richest soil that exists in the Harry Potter universe. The founders are probably the characters from the original series that we know the best by name, but know almost nothing else about. Their influence over the rest of the wizarding world is possibly unparalleled by any other character. I mean, they form the first and best wizarding school and the divide between Salazar and the other three is such a divide throughout history that it is literally what drives the events of Harry and Voldemort to the present day. That is a truly powerful friendship to crack. Like what 
could have possibly happened? What is the backstory there that would have led to this divide? How could there be no compromise? It just doesn't make sense to me. Muggle wizard relationships, obviously super tense during that period of time. That seems like a lot of fun to explore. Beyond that though, we could also see each of the founders relics in action and how they came to get them and use them. We could see them sort students pre-sorting hat. We could see them get the sorting hat. We could see the entire story about how Godric steals the sword of Gryffindor from the goblins. Slytherin is literally a descendant of Cadmus Peveril, meaning he would quite literally own the resurrection stone. The diadem was a crown. Does that mean that Rowena was some version of royalty? And her and Helga obviously have descendants. So who were their husbands or partners? I mean, seriously, I could go on and on and on for like four seasons at least. But I won't for now, partly because I'm actually slightly afraid of sharing some of my ideas. Hands down, this is the direction that I hope they go with it. And somehow, I don't even know how, hope that Jay and I could be a part of it. Like, I don't know if they're looking for writers, I don't know how to get in contact with these people. I don't know where to start, but I am not joking. I genuinely want to be involved. Lifelong dream, you guys, lifelong dream. I can't even tell you the number of hours that Jay and I have specifically discussed this exact thing. Let's just say we have a Google Doc. But guys, for my question of the day, what do you think? Which of these ideas do you like the best? Is there an idea we didn't discuss that you would like even more? Let us know in the towel section down below. Literally the only other thought that I had was like, if they just made the entire book series, like the whole Harry Potter series again, just each season was a book. You could cover everything. But guys, as always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like some more Harry Potter action from us, you can check out this video right up here where we talk about whether or not Salazar Slytherin was actually evil. But otherwise, until next week, bye.